Man, it's freezing out here. No, I mean that literally, not just a figure of speech. You need to get your boat winterized. Or you could do it yourself. Now, I should preface all of this by saying winterizing your own boat could be a slippery slope. If you don't do it right or you aren't aware of some of the various features that your boat might have that other boats don't, then you could end up with a very expensive repair bill in the spring. So the boat that we've got here today that I'm going to be showing you a basic winterization on is very basic. It doesn't have a heater core. It doesn't have ballast tanks. It doesn't have any extra stuff like that. It is just an engine. Some ski boats, Mastercraft, Malibu, Supra, and a whole bunch of others will have ballast pumps that need to be winterized. Some are closed loop cooled, some are open loop cooled, some have a transmission cooler, power steering coolers, things of that nature that all need to be addressed. Otherwise, you could have freeze damage in any one of those things. But as long as you can figure out what your specific boat has and does not have and address it appropriately, make sure that you flush the water out, sometimes with a heater core, I will blow it out with low pressure air. I'll have a link and a picture of all the various tools and explanation down in the description as well as on the website of what I use and why. But for this video's sake, I'm going to show you what you need to do to get your engine safe because that's all we need to do on this specific boat. This is a Volvo Penta with an SXM stern drive. So the engine is mounted traditionally, unlike some V drive, ski boats and things of that nature. So all of our thermostat housing and everything is right here in the front, easy to get to. We're gonna end up taking these hoses off, but first we need to drain the block and the exhaust manifolds. So if we come down around here, that sensor right in the middle of the frame, we're gonna have to unscrew that. And then on the back of the exhaust manifold, there's a brass plug. Now sometimes, now sometimes boats won't have these brass plugs and sensors and things. They might have little blue plastic plugs. That's easier to identify and locate because they're neon blue. So for an example on how one could differ, this has one central blue drain here. There are no drains on the manifolds or the block. So in order to drain this, we just unscrew that, let it drain, then come up here to our thermostat housing and pull these hoses off and fill them all up. Now with one of these that has a central drain, what I normally do is wait for it to drain then put a little bit of antifreeze in each hose until we get pink coming out of our central drain down here. So let's look at the other side of the engine. Now let's look at this again. See that brass drain plug right on the side of the block? That's our block drain. And then up here on the back of the exhaust manifold is another little brass drain. And that is our exhaust drain for this side. So essentially what we're going to do is pull all four of those drain plugs out, let all the water drain out of the block and the exhausts, then we'll work on refilling the entire system. Let me get these drain plugs out and we'll show you the next step in just a second. While that's draining, you may still be able to hear it trickling in the background, we're going to turn our attention to hose clamps and hoses. So remember how I said earlier how nice it is that on this particular motor all of the thermostat housing is right on the front where it's easy to get to? This is why it's nice that it's easy to get to. This is our big block recirculating hose. We've got two hoses here and here. 
that go to the exhaust manifolds. This comes from the fuel cooler, I believe, on this model. And this hose down here underneath of that is our water pump inlet. So we're gonna take all five of these hoses off. Now with some of these broke loose, hose clamps off, you might grab hold of them and go, oh, I can't get those off though. That's where this little magical tool comes in. So we're gonna take this and push it in between the hose and the thermostat housing. Then if you wanna get really fancy, get yourself a little bit of soapy water and Give a little spritz in where you've broken that seal. And that hose will slide right off, no problem, after you've broken it loose with this tool. All right, so we've got our block hose, fuel cooler hose, water pump hose, and both exhaust hoses. Everything is loose. Now we're gonna put the drain plugs back in and refill this engine from the top with antifreeze. And the beauty of doing it this way, by pulling the hoses, is you know you are getting absolutely every drop of water out. There's not a chance that there could be a diluted bit of water, like if you ran through the um, outdrive, you know, with a set of earmuffs and stuff and just ran the engine. By draining the block, draining the exhaust, and then refilling them like this, there's not a chance that there's water anywhere left in the system. With all the drain plugs back in, we've got our pink non-toxic RV marine antifreeze. Pink is common down here where I'm at in Tennessee. If you live up north, you may have to get blue or something that's rated for a colder temperature. I know this is negative 50. They make negative 75 and negative 100, I believe, are purple and blue, respectively, if I'm thinking correctly. So basically what we're going to do is take this and just we're going to pour antifreeze in here. I can hear it trickling. So that means that we have filled this exhaust up and it has started running over the top of this riser and is now leaving the boat. So we're done with this exhaust. We're gonna do the same for the other exhaust. Okay, that one's full. Get our fuel cooler line here. I don't know if you can see that. Hopefully you can. Okay, poured enough down there that it is now coming back out that hose. So we've filled that. It'll dilute anything that's left. We've got to do our water pump hose here. So I'm going to take this and kind of shove it over here past these fuel lines so that I can actually get angled to pour into it. There we have it. That is full. And that's a good sign that it's staying in there because that means this impeller is pretty healthy. Sometimes as they wear and fins break off and stuff like that, uh, this antifreeze will flush through really quickly and uh, generally not a good thing to see that. So we can put this all back together now. That's pretty much all there is to it for a basic winterization. Um, again, you're going to have to be careful because if you find 
that your boat has heater cores, closed loop cooled, or this, that, the other thing, there's more to it. So be careful and remember, keep your boat from freezing.